question. Uh, any other questions? Yes, sir. Um, so you do provide a service for a lot of Asian American males. Just, and you touched on a lot of points about you know Asian American males like being emasculated, feeling effeminate, or feminized. Um, but do you believe you combat or contribute to the perception of the emasculate uh, Asian American male because you provide such a service that is you know very well publicized in the media? Does it give off the image that you know all Asian American males are unable to date? Okay. Fair question. I actually get that issue raised a lot. Um, you know, it's always interesting to me in the fact that I think people ascribe a lot of powers to me, that I have that ability to, to form that, to form the perception of, you know, white America. All right? At this point, the only people that pay attention to me is like the dating community and Asian Americans. White America doesn't know who the fuck I am, right? <laughs> so I am not contributing to that stereotype in that regards. Secondly, Let's consider the fact that Asian American females have a higher rate of suicide. I right, just using this as an example, um, have a higher rate of suicide than other groups of females. And let us say that I decide I want to do something about this. Maybe I'm a clinic researcher, psychiatrist, psychologist, some sort of mental health professional. Not that I am a mental health professional. I am basically a teacher. I have no kind of medical degree. So caveat in that. But I decided I want to provide an outreach service to Asian American females. Or you know, it doesn't have to be Asian American females. It could be the fact that Asian American in the armed services, especially in war zones, have four times higher suicide rate than any other group of Asian any ethnicity, you know, in the military. In either regards, whether it's Asian American females or Asian Americans in the military, I decide I would like to help you whether in some sort of <clears throat> guidance counselor fashion or, you know, medical fashion, does that, in your opinion, contribute to a problem that already pre-exists? And I would say no. It's already happening. The global forces at play have nothing to do with me. This will happen regardless of what I'm doing. The dating industry, not the, you know, not the beauty industry, which is like a billion, not the plastic surgery industry, it's like a billion, or, you know. The dating coaching industry is about 100 million, I would say. I, and my, <coughs> you know, travels, going to different conventions and conferences and seeing other people's programs, about a third of other dating coaching programs have Asian American clients. Like a third. If there were like a 12 person boot camp, like three, of, three to four of them would be Asian, all right? This is something that, again, is part of Asian American culture at this point. I am directly addressing it, simply because it's not what I intended, but people came to me for that. Hopefully that addresses your question. Yes? I guess I have to define myself as Asian born Asian, because uh, I'm from Beijing, and uh, I mean, it's, uh, it comes to the culture, you know, different culture. Uh, since I've been to, I got into this country, I've never been to a date with any Asian woman. I mean, it's, uh, I, mean, I think like uh, when I was in Boston, I did an uh, Irish girl to come to me, and I mean, it's, it's, I know it's my thing. But uh, I mean, the different culture is uh, how would you say to, to deal with different culture? Like that girl, I don't know if you have any experience with the girl from Europe. And, uh, I, uh, a couple months ago, I met a girl from France, and I'm trying to approach her, and uh, what she thinking is sort of different from what I'm thinking, and uh, how do you deal with that situation? <laughs> so that's a little vague. Um, generally speaking, when you are, if English is not your native language, I guess we call them openers. They're just basically icebreakers, right? They're just con conversation start starters. But first, you go in and it, you know, it's, it has to be short and it has to be sweet. Nothing too complicated. Whether it's, I think you're beautiful, I'd like to meet you, something like that. Oh, the, the question is, uh, I have no, no problem with approaching. You have no problem, okay. The afterwards. The afterwards, okay. <laughs> you know, you know, sad to a romantic, you know, and this, that, that's a problem. Also, I tried to approach a girl, uh, she's a Ukrainian, she's from Chicago. 
And, and, and the, the way she did, I took her to the Ben and Jerry in the University City. Yeah. There, and we have a talk and you know, walk around. And then, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Those have a conversation, <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I actually know exactly what you're saying. Um, yeah. uh, I always say, uh, the biggest mistake guys can make about women is thinking they know what they're thinking. Is, is men thinking they know exactly what women are thinking. And the biggest mistake that women can make is, is thinking that they know exactly what men are thinking. Whether it's a first date or a third date where you've been married for 10 years. Is to be open and to be honest and be willing to interpret that woman and be willing to exist with her um, by like establishing who you are and the things that you believe in and that you're set for and to interpret what she stands for, what she believes in, and to put those two together. And when you meet someone right off the bat, you just simply won't know that. And that's why it is a courtship. It's why you why you learn about that individually. And and from coming from a place where you where I've dated lots of different types of girls from lots of different areas, um, it's like that's the most fun part is getting to know what, what a woman is like, <coughs> what a woman thinks, what how she exists in her environment, and then being able to react and support that. I think um, you may be uh, what a lot of Asian guys have an issue with was the T or the E part of Garrett's acronym, like logistics, activity, transition, and then escalation. Presumably, you're having a conversation with a girl. You want this to move forward, romantically and physically. All right? and you can't simply talk about your, your dog Fluffy for the entire conversation at Ben & Jerry's. It's got to move forward. They asked again, as Gareth pointed out, some intent. Where are you taking this? Where are you taking this with this girl? You know, it's got to be beyond fluff talk, right? Well, where, where am I supposed to be heading to? I mean, after everything. <laughs> That's where you take Fair a boot camp. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's been like three or four years ago we're talking about like oftentimes it seems like kind of referred to you know, Asian males targeting kind of like non-Asian females. Um, yes. Why the specific focus on like non-Asian okay, Well, I've already addressed I addressed that. First of all, forty five percent of American born Asian women won't date you. <laughs> that again, that's not my number. I mean there's there's a lot of different things. But I think at some point, like, every Asian guy has heard of, like, the Asian girl that refuses to date Asian guys. It's a pretty common phenomenon. And again, they've, it's, you know, you can look up the U.S. Census about the outmarriage rate. So you have a large portion of Asian American women that are not dating or not marrying Asian men. This is not a condemnation. This is simply a description of what's happening. Secondly, again, we talked about this. Um, due to ultrasound due to um, China's one-child policy and female infanticide, there's literally not enough Asian women in the world anymore. Right? I mean, you have a lot of different forces at play that make it counterproductive for all Asian men to focus exclusively on Asian women because Asian women do not lack that opportunity. If any Asian girl wanted to right now, she could go to a bar and get picked up, get approached, get talked to by a white guy, a black guy, all right, a Latin guy. An Asian guy goes to the bar, and if he's still in that mentality where he only talks to Asian girls, even if there's 100 girls in the place, where statistically 4% of our population, that's only four girls he can talk to. An Asian girl does not, other than like some, some circumstances, does not limit herself to four guys that she's going to talk to. Again, it's simple practicality. It's the rea reality of the situation that we live in. Yeah? Okay, so um, one thing that uh, really motivated us to reach out to you was um, the line in the Fever Tigers article that said that you seek to achieve uh, social change through pickup. So how do you believe you have achieved that? And do you think that uh, your methods have strayed from what you initially thought uh, like how you could achieve your activism? Um, well, the company actually straight into kind of this accidental activism because it used to be like, wow, I'm having a lot of fun here. I'm living the Playboy lifestyle, going across the world um, and having a lot of fun with my students, with my coaches. And as obviously as I've gotten older, there's a more serious bent to it. I mean, I've been speaking at like, these universities um, trying to, again, just educate that 
You know, it's, the, the dating culture is changing for Asian men. It has to, all right? Uh, that's, there aren't a lot of role models. I'm a role model some, I'm not the greatest by any measure, but so, you know, again, I get recognized like almost every single night that I go out, all right? It is the fact that Asian men need both someone to look up to and someone to just learn from, whether it's my mistakes I make or the successes I have, all right? It is to see that someone is being successful in this dating arena where the media doesn't portray us as being successful.